Alright guys, just got home from ICAST 2024. You know, lots of cool new products released at ICAST every year, but it seems like this year there was a trend that was definitely predominant. And I would say that's uh, jig heads and minnows. That's just how it is. But there's some other cool stuff coming out also. And I kind of wanted to give a shout out to some of the companies I'm not sponsored by. But nothing crazy really sticks out to me that uh, I remember seeing that I'm really planning on ordering. So I'm just going to tell y'all kind of the base. Was that sound bad, honey? Okay, I'm just going to tell y'all the new products from my companies that I'm sponsored by. Because I didn't really get to look around iCast a ton. I walked around one time. But for the most part, I'm in the booths hanging out with people and talking to my sponsors. So I'm going to tell you all the new baits from iCast 2024. And one of them, probably one of the most hyped bait releases in a long, long time. Obviously, it's going to come from Crest City. The Crest City booth has been Crest City Rapala 13 booth. Super packed. It always is at iCast. I mean, it's, there's so much hype around all the baits right now. And it's well deserved because a lot of these baits are really, really good. But from all my sponsors, I'm going to tell you all the, the new baits that I'll be using, some of the new things that I'll be using from them. And the cool thing about iCast now, I remember seeing it back in the day and watching videos on it and learning about the new stuff. Well, now, when the stuff that my sponsors release comes out, I've had time to fish with it for a few months. So that's one of the reasons they send us stuff is because whenever we go to iCast, we'll actually have knowledge about when they're good, why they're good, what makes them good, and we can actually make, you know, good videos at iCast. So we're going to kind of go through a lot of the things that I saw at iCast and I've been using for a few months that I can finally show y'all now. So first things first, though, for my old school rod builders out there that used to watch me back in the day when I built my own rods, Fuji has came back out with black guides. A lot of people want that. It's not a glossy black finish, but it's a super dark charcoal finish. It basically is black. Like, it's pretty much black, and everybody wanted that. I remember whenever they discontinued the black frames, I was at iCast that year with them. I think I think that was the year they discontinued. I remember just me standing there and how many questions we got about the black guides. So, they're back. So if you want those, you can get those. They're also going to come in a very inexpensive price point to try to compete with some of the some of the cheaper guides out there. So a lot more affordable guides coming from Fuji, and also everybody like everybody like the black guides, and they're back. So talking about guides and rods, first thing we're we'll getting into is the new 13 fishing rods. If y'all watch my video very much, my videos, y'all know how much I like cranking in the winter, in the fall, in the early spring. I love it. I live in an area of the country where it's super good you know it's like very efficient way to fish we catch a lot of really really big ones doing it and for a long time i've told y'all that the fate seven foot cranking rod is a sleeper everybody loves that thing that i've i've let use mine i mean it's a really really good rod for very inexpensive well that rod is going to be discontinued and the one to take its place is place is the oath and i told them whenever they redesigned this rod i said look do not change this blank like, don't change, if you do anything, make it stronger if you want to. And in the midsection, do not change the action on this tip because that's what I love for throwing these small little baits like the OG Tiny 4, little balsa baits, little square bills, stuff like that. Like, I love this bait, this rod for cranking those small baits. And this is the Oath. This is effectively the exact same blank, just been updated a little bit. I've been using it now, caught some really, really big ones on it. The seven foot cranking rod, it's only 99 bucks. So, obviously, uh, you know, prices are going up on everything. Upgraded the grips, stuff like that. You know, upgraded the real seat. That adds a little bit of, of cost, but also it's just a little bit better rod, but still with that perfect action that I love. So, feels fishes really similarly to the Fate. It just feels a little bit better in your hand. So, the 7 foot cranking, oh, phenomenal rod. Also, that $99 price point, they they got 7.3 medium heavies. They've got a bunch of different types of rods. Just that cranking one to me really, really stood out when I used it. That's what I use all the time now, no matter if I'm fishing Elite Series or fishing a Lazy Man tournament on Saturdays at my local lake. Like, that's my small bait cranking rod. So, from there, we've got kind of the Oath's Big Brother. This is the Myth. This is a spinning, obviously, 7.1 medium spinning. But these rods are made out of 46-ton graphite. They have Fuji alkanite guides on them so really premium components you can see the updated reel all these um grips split grips on all of them the bait casters actually have half cork half eva and the reason for that is the eva butt y'all know 
you slam them underneath the trolling motor balance buster you step on them over time the cork on the bottom just seems to break and chip away so the eva but it actually gives that rod more life in, in my opinion but i don't really use the butt that much except for casting obviously but i really wanted the the cork actual real seat so you can see kind of how the oath is i like that because it feels really good when you're holding it but that eva butt gives you a little bit more durability and then the myth casting is also similar to that but this is a spinning these myths are very very powerful and really really crispy as far as like the fast actions like they get to the backbone really quickly and i i really enjoyed fishing with them i'm gonna start using the myth a ton i've already transitioned from the envy to a lot more muses and then now i'm going to start using some of the myth for some of the some of the applications that i feel like their actions and powers are better for so that's the cool thing about 13 i use rods from the very cheapest or i shouldn't say cheapest the most inexpensive rods they have like the oath all the way up to the envy and the muse and stuff like that because there's actions and powers that I pick up, and I'm like, man, this will be really good for this certain technique. And that's what I use because I have confidence in all their products. But uh, from there, that's the main two. You know, from there, we're going to go straight into the height bait, the Mooch Minnow. This is one that Connell won a tournament on. I think Wheeler won a tournament on. A lot of people have won a tournament on this bait. It's been a really, really good bait so far. Lots of hype around it. And I know everybody's going to say, G. Wilkers another minnow style bait but this one's a little bit different this one's it actually is unique obviously it's made out of a tpe material super tpe material so obviously it's going to stretch everybody likes that you know other companies call it a last tech whatever you want to call it it's a tpe material this is the gizzard shad color it's the it's, it's the most popular color you can see how soft that tail is on this but the cool thing about this tail is it's got two flanges on it and it's very very thin those flanges make it just have a little bit of a corkscrew in action like it just kind of wobbles through the water like this with that tail because that and then flanges just make it do a little bit it's not near as much as a paddle tip but it's just something a little bit extra when those fish are following it to make it have some action because a lot of times those fish see that bait the bait's falling whenever you're live scoping they either bite it or they don't say like 19 times out of 20 they don't five percent of the time they bite it whenever they don't they follow it after they start following it, the odds of one of them biting goes way low, like super low. When they don't bite it and they follow it, they don't bite it very often after that. But whenever you have this action, just a super natural action swimming through the water and barely moving, I feel like it's made a lot of those fish commit that have been following it. Now, so now like 5% of them bite it on the fall, and then while I'm reeling it, maybe like another 2% of them will actually commit to it. And over the course of a day, that makes a big, big difference. But you can put this bait on fish with it for a month it seems like because it's so durable if you put it on the right hook and, and you know super glue it or screw lock whatever you want to do it's a really really good bait and everybody has fell in, fallen in love with this thing i've had a lot of people come up to me i mean do these it's like crack going around the elite series everybody's like man give me get some of them mooch minnows i'm like i'm low dude sorry i've only got a couple left you know that's just kind of how it is out there you know but uh that's that's a joke for sure but uh been a really really good bait they last for a long time too a lot of people think these things are absolutely magical like people love this thing and i i agree it catches them really really good it's just the profile is phenomenal like it's a three and a half inch thin really good colors minnow style bait they're going to commit to it whenever they chase it so i'm gonna save my favorite new crusty bait for last but after that we have a two and a half inch mayor so this is a this is a cool size. You know, all the pressure that these lakes are getting. Is everything going good? Huh? Hunter's looking at me like uh, I'm saying something wrong. So, all these lakes are getting a ton of pressure. And we're starting to see smaller and smaller baits catching bigger and bigger fish. That's a cutie. It's a little cutie for sure. This is a green pumpkin disco color. One of the new colors. I've caught them on this actually really, really good in the freeloader. But, uh, cool little bait. The, the two and a half is subtle very very subtle which whenever you're going to a two and a half inch bait you want it to be subtle like you're not throwing a two and a half inch bait because you want a ton of draw power you're throwing a two and a half inch bait because you want a them to commit to the bait when they see it so it still it shocked me i've thrown this on a ball head with a one out hook i threw it on smith lake in practice caught some on it it's actually got a steel has a good body roll like the four and the and the three and a half inch mayor like it has a really good body roll or the three inch mayor so 
I'm a big fan of this thing so far. Caught some spotted bass on it. Haven't got to use it a ton, but uh, like I said, I only had them for a couple months. But definitely caught some fish on them, and I was definitely surprised at the retained action that this thing had, dropping it down to a small swim bait. The guys out there who've experimented with small swim baits, y'all know how it is. It gets to where it doesn't have a lot of those those good properties of a big swim bait. This one, it's not. It doesn't. It's not as good as the four inch Mayer as far as body roll, but it's still really, really good as far as how the size so hyped about this this thing's this thing's been really really cool all right i'm gonna move my favorite bait i'm gonna get to another one this right here the janitor the cleanup crew pretty fit pretty fitting name caught some fish on this at pickwick last week um caught some fish on it fishing local tournaments lots of different times i've caught fish on this this year but you can see it's a nico slash drop shot worm you know, it's a, it's not like a, it's not like a robo thin, like a regular robo worm. It's a little bit thicker than that, which I like. You know, in years past, I always threw the robo fat worm the most, and now I've been throwing this one because I do prefer it because it's got so much action and the colors are just super crisp and clean. But really, really good drop shot worm. But it also has a place right here for your crossover band or to just Nico rig it. It is a phenomenal Nico worm. I've had a lot of people in the industry say that underwater footage of this this is instantly number one or tied for number one with a nico worm because the action it has in the water it's just a it just does exactly what a nico worm is supposed to do as far as laying over and then in the water when it's falling kind of straightening out then laying over i mean it's this this has been a really really good worm i've caught them on a shaky head on it the untamed tackle shaking ace i've caught them on a drop shot and i've caught them nico rigging it so and if people don't know this all of these baits have a scent on them if y'all haven't smelled it it's a very unique scent man i can't i don't remember the name of the scent it's a unique scent whenever you smell these you you know it's a crush city bait but uh anyways that's the janitor multi-purpose everybody knows you know people it's one of the staple baits people keep in their boat a trick worm a floating worm whatever it's got tons of applications like this it is going to come in methylate it's got more action than a lot of the other floating worms though so now we've got the pig stick this bait is obviously going to be a stick worm everybody throws these all the time stick worm style bait this is probably the softest stick worm on the market like look, look at that look at how much it lays over this is a bait that everybody knows Crush City. So, very, very similar as far as movement. So, this bait is super soft. It's the softest stick worm I've ever used. And now with forward facing sonar, we can test it. This is the fastest falling stick bait I've ever used as far as how fast it actually falls through the water column and the movement on it. I think that these ridges on it actually give it a lot of movement. Now, I'm not telling you that, you know, it's, it's you know, the, a revolutionary stick worm, but it is a very, very good stick worm, and since I've been using it, I've started picking up other brands less and less and less. But now, to, to be 100% honest with y'all, I've been throwing the same brand of stick worm for like 10, 12, 15 years. I've won tons and tons and tons of money on it. And it's not something you can just throw away instantly. Like, you don't just make that change instantly. But over the past, I've had these since Toledo Bend this year. Over the past six months, I've been using this stick worm more and more and more and more. And now I have just as much confidence in this as the other brand stick worm. And a lot of times, I really do think it has more action. So I'm not trying to compare the two or anything like that. But when you make a stick worm, you know what it's going to get compared to. It's just going to, you know. So that's just how it is. So I'm just keeping it real, y'all. It, it's a good bait. It's definitely comparable. Now, last. But definitely not least, this is my guy right here. This is the Crush City Hedgehog. Did I say that last one was called a pig stick? Yeah. The Crush City Hedgehog. Dude, this sucker right here. I've caught so many big ones on this at home. Tuesday nighters, Wednesday nighters, Thursday nighters, Saturday morning tournaments. Heck, we Monday, had, Tuesday, we had that, Thursday, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, all them days. We had a tournament. Actually, Hunter's family has been talking junk, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Want me to go fish a family tournament. So I opted not to go to the local lake tournament. 
and I went to the family tournament. Won it on this dude right here, Hedgehog. So, this is a, obviously, it smaller bait. He got a lot of stuff going on with him. A lot of stuff going on. This is a four inch Hedgehog. You know, it looks similar to some other creature style baits, but it's got these arms up here up front. If I'm flipping it around, which I've called them like this a lot, flipping around docks, flipping it to undercut banks. If I'm not flipping in heavy cover, I do it just like this. I haven't Carolina rigged this bait yet, but and I don't throw Carolina rig much at all. But if I do Carolina rig this, I'll leave it just like this. Now, when I'm flipping in heavy cover, I take these front arms off like this. This is what I do. I'm just telling you. Flipping in heavy cover, that increases my fall rate through the wood and also lets that bait get hung up less going in and out of the wood. You know, as far as, I mean, not, not that it gets snagged, but just there's less resistance so it slides through a little bit better. So when I'm flipping heavy cover, I flip it just like this. Whenever I'm flipping light cover, I leave those front two arms. The biggest thing is, you can see these curly legs down here. That's going to be the main action. Well, the secondary action is going to be these upside down appendages, which in the water they just like vibrate. Like, if you watch them in the water, they just vibrate the whole time it's falling, the whole time you're reeling it, whatever it may be. These right here, and I mean, Wheeler told me, he said, man, I think them upside down appendages really, really help. And I, I was kind of skeptical at first, but since I've been throwing this thing, I've caught so many big ones on it. And the lakes that I fish, you don't catch a lot of big ones. But I've caught so many four to five and a half pounders on this bait in the past three or four months. It's actually kind of been absurd, like for a flipping bait. And I flipped, you know, full size brush hogs, big jigs, all that type of stuff. And I right now I have the most confidence in catching a big one around wood on this bait right here. So it's been been good. This is my go-to flipping bait now. On Wheeler this year, I weighed in a bunch of fish on this exact same bait. If y'all y'all will see the video eventually and I caught a lot of fish on the hedgehog. Where else I catch some on? Caught some on at Smith. Don't think I weighed any in. Caught some on it in practice on Pickwick, but I didn't throw it in the tournament. But Wheeler Lake, I weighed in a I mean a bunch of fish on this. Probably close to Probably went in five of the 15, maybe maybe seven of the 15 on this bait. So, big fan of that. Now, it wouldn't be fair to go to ICAST 2024 and not talk about a jig head because uh, they were everywhere. I mean, you couldn't go to the urinal without finding a dang jig head somewhere along the way. You got to wash your hands. Hey, there's another one. You got to get some something to eat. Hey, there's another one. They're everywhere. But this right here has been available in Japan for a while. A lot of guys have been ordering this over from Japan. I think I heard about this bait, this head, late last summer, last summerish. I heard about this head for the first time. It's a Gamakatsu Horizon head. Now, a lot of the guys who are not sponsored by Gamakatsu have been ordering this bait from Japan to get it over here and use it on the minnow style baits. And the cool thing about this bait is, about this head, my favorite part about this head. So this is a 2 alt. It comes in a 3 alt which fits the freeloader perfectly, but light weights. And that's one thing that's hard to find for jig heads is those light, those 330 seconds with a 3 alt. Typically, to get a 3 alt, you gotta go up to a 3 eighths or a half or something, or a 3 quarter to get a 4 or 5 alt. A lot of times, this one, this is a 2 alt, like I said, fits good. I mean, it's a little bit big for the mooch, but it fits pretty good for the mooch. But, uh. You got the ones, got the twos. The two alt actually fits really good in the mooch. I haven't thrown this the mooch on this head yet because I I've, I've only had the three alts. I haven't had the two alts, but the two alt fits really good for the mooch minnow. But it's got a flat keeper on top, which makes it where when you're throwing those thinner profile baits, it's not going to rip it as bad. And then obviously it's got the nano alpha coated hooks. It's got kind of an EWG style hook, which I don't like for fishing shallow at all. But whenever you're fishing deep or you're vertical on them, that EWG hooks them really, really well. Weighed in a lot of fish on Wheeler on this bait, on, on this jig head with a freeloader. And then I caught a lot of fish on Pickwick on this jig head with a freeloader. So it's been, a it's been a really, really good bait for a lot of people for about a year. I've got a bunch of them now, a big assortment. Gamakatsu is releasing these in America. But it just wouldn't be fair to talk about ICAST 2024 without talking about a jig head. So... The, like I said, though, the cool thing about it is, one cool thing about it, the packaging is wrote in Japanese. I mean, you can't tell what nothing is. But, anyways, the biggest part of this, like I said, 
they're going to have different packaging for the ones that come over to America eventually. But those lighter weight heads, like right here we've got, you can get a 3.5 gram, which is light. I don't know how light it is. This is a 4.4 gram. You get a, a 3.5 grams with a 3 alt hook. Super slow fall with bigger baits. That, that, that's the coolest part for me. But anyways, I think for iCast 2024, that was uh, most of the stuff. Sunline has their new sinking braid out. It's called All Might. And that was called All Might. Anyways, it is actually, if you use the Sunline D braid before, the D braid was dense and actually sunk in the water, which makes a lot of your baits fall faster, act different in current, stuff like that. Well, the new All Might braid is actually even more dense and sinks a good bit faster than the D braid did. So it's the fastest sinking braid on the market. It has a I think it's a one, I think it's 50% denser than water, I believe. I think water has a gravity of like one, and then this has a gravity of like 1.5. So it falls faster than any other line on the market. It's going to be really, really cool for drifting and current on St. Lawrence River. Stuff like that, getting straight down. The one, one thing, though, I will say about the All Might after using it, and I've used the D Braid more, but I've used the All Might, it, uh, go up a pound test. That's, that's what I would say. If you typically throw 12, get 16. If you typically throw 8, get 11. You know, whatever it may be, just upsize it a little bit because the diameters are so thin on it that you can get away with a with a heavier pound test and keep that diameter that you are normal used to fishing with. So I think that's about it for ICAST. Oh, look right here. Fished a local tournament yesterday. Guess what we got? Hedgehog with teeth marks dog i'm talking about teeth marks on it caught a few on this flipped it over caught a few more on it. so there you go that's how i flipped it too in the heavy cover so that's the deal but anyways hope y'all enjoyed that video just telling y'all kind of the things that i'll be using after icast 2024 and got to use a little bit before that so hope y'all enjoyed the video appreciate it guys pickwick lake npfl videos will be out this week Hired a cameraman. He's been killing it. So those videos will be out, and then we're going to be catching up with the rest of the year. So appreciate you guys watching. We'll see y'all. Man, live scope.